Hi guys, good morning. Uh, welcome to the interactive session of CAPEDGE. In this session, we have invited very prestigious and renowned people from industry who have been into industry for pretty long. They have very rich experience of investigation and fraud detection and prevention. The purpose of this particular video is to interact with those industry leaders and understand what would be the career scope in this field. Any professional who wants to get into this career, this interactive session may be very useful for them. So I would like to have a small brief discussion with all the esteemed panelists. Our uh, renowned panelist, we have Mr. Prem Kumar Sivramanyam, we have Mr. Somit Chitre, and we have Mr. Harish Kumar from industry. So I would like to hear from all these people and let's start this interactive session. So may I have your brief introduction, Mr. Prem Kumar Subramaniam? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, uh, Kamajit, uh, and thanks uh, others also. Um, I'm Prem, I'm called as uh, um, shortly and fondly called as Prem. I'm in the US. Um, I have been into two industries. Uh, one is banking, being a banker, uh, an accountant by uh, qualification, and then a banker, a credit analyst for about 10 years, and then now into IT. So uh, we uh, make solutions. I work with Oracle Incorporation uh, in the United States, uh, and uh, I am spe I'm spearheading uh, the risk and compliance practice, um, wherein we make um, a lot of uh, anti-money laundering products, KYC products, fraud products. We are not into full-fledged in this one, uh, but um, we want to enter into full-fledged into uh, fraud products. And because currently we are catering only to the tier one banks and tier two banks across the globe, but we would like to go in actually also outside banks also because there is a huge potential and scope considering uh, the uh, with the digital uh, frauds happening in and uh, cyber frauds happening in, uh, we want to make a foray into uh, that area. We'll move on to Mr. Somit now. So Somit, can I have your brief introduction, please? Yeah, uh, so hi everybody and thanks Kaval uh, for, for inviting me for this uh, small session. And uh, thank you Prem for the, you know, your rich experience and the comments around uh, upskilling ourselves and studying, uh, you know, around the area of fraud. So as I completely agree with what you've said, and you know, just to add my bit to it before I start about my experience, uh, I think this area is ever growing. The fraudsters, you know, which we need to address are are very dynamic these days, uh, digitally equipped uh, across the globe, and can operate from wherever they are sitting, and you know, can hack or enter any country, you know, to perpetrate fraud. So from individual perspective, you have to be ever ready. Uh, these people and these individuals who are, you know, getting into our lives. Uh, performing misdemeanors are not sitting next to us, but they can be sitting anywhere in the globe. So as you rightly said that, you know, uh, CFE is just a start and, you know, we need to upskill ourselves, you know, first, of course, understanding what fraud is from CFE certification and maybe then going forward, you know, upskilling ourselves, you know, digitally with digital controls and other things. So that's around the, you know, uh, let's say subject, uh, given my experience, you know, uh, I have around 20 years of experience now in financial crime, uh, all throughout in banking and consulting. I started my career with ABN Amro Bank. Uh, from there, I moved to Kotak Mahindra Bank, uh, then to MetLife Insurance, joined consulting, you know, uh, in the area of forensic. Uh, I worked for almost three and a half years with KPMG. And now I'm a group director with Standard Chartered Bank uh, uh, in the group fraud risk management team. Uh, so uh, what we are doing right now is that, you know, addressing financial crime at global level, uh, addressing crime at around 65 watt countries, uh, installing tools, system, process, policies, training uh, new fraud professionals. So that's that's part of our job. And world, so as far as my experience is concerned, I have experience of somewhere of 17 odd years into the financial sector, and I'm handling the fraud investigation, prevention, detection, all aspects in the current domain. Now I'll move on to. Um... A question uh, which my audience might also have that these financial crimes or frauds, what we see day in, day out, uh, can any uh, any one of you share some kind of real life experience where people have suffered? So, for example, uh, a fraud instances where people have lost money in banking transactions 
or something related to cyber fraud maybe a quick real life example would be really helpful here so the question is open to all the three panelists please well i'll i'll, th I'll start with uh, uh, my experience i think uh, I think the best uh, uh, reasoning for becoming a certified fraud examiner was when I was a victim. So um, I had an account with uh, a, a renowned bank. Uh, I don't want to name the bank in India. And then my account, what I had used is, uh, I went to an internet cafe. I had got a loan. I wanted to transfer the funds actually uh, before I boarded the train. I went to the internet cafe. This was about a couple of years back, about, uh, about at least about 10 to 12 years back. And this was in India. Um, and then um, I had uh, uh, transferred the funds to my dad's account. And next day, uh, around 12 o'clock when I was in my office, I saw uh, first at 25,000, second at 25,000, and then my entire account actually was wiped out. So by two o'clock, actually, I had no balance actually in my account. Luckily, we had, um, I mean to say, we were having corporate banking relationship with the bank, and then we said that we are going to close this, and then within a day, uh, we got it. Then, um, uh, in fact, at investigation, uh, I mean to say, since banks were, because at that time, I, uh, because I was working with Oracle, um, I still continue to work with Oracle, uh, so banks were not supposed, but then what, uh, as a kind of a relationship, they actually shared, actually, because they were using our company's Oracle's uh, FlexCube solution because they use, they also use the analytical applications also, they use the bank users. So we said that can we know exactly. So a very small software called as a keylogger software was installed and it saw the strokes somewhere from Nigeria or some uh, Botswana siphoned the money and, um, and took all that money. Now, I mean to say just because I think God's grace or I think some luck because of the relationship, I got my money. But the thing is that that's where first we started our consulting journey. We said, do you have something called as an RSA token? Because do you have a double two-factor authentication? Why exactly is that? Because, okay, someone can use a keylogger software. Can, they can find my password. They can check and hook on from any of the systems. Do you have a, a two-factor authentication? They said that, sorry, sir. This is we cater actually for an Indian mass banking. Uh, Indian mass banking will not have a kind of an uh, RSA token because it's very expensive. So we said, okay, we said that we will give you some security questions, dynamic security questions, which are very, very crucial, which only you will know. And uh, it started, the journey started like we started making some a list of questionnaire. We started giving them some pictures and till date, Whenever I log on to the bank account, like so many people, because these the brainchilds were we were the set of the first team we we did it because we wanted our accounts to be secure, and that is how the bank thanked us a lot. Uh, the uh, the retail banking head, and uh, still uh, it's being carried. So that's the starting journey for me where I became a fraud victim, and that's where actually I started the journey that okay I think it's time for us to probably help. Um, I would say, because since being in the United States, insurance fraud, health insurance fraud is phenomenal. I mean, they say mind blowing. You, I can get a, a, a code for not a surgery done, please the money from the insurance company, share a 50-50 with the surgeon and I can walk away. I mean, it's like when I was going through the uh, CFE program, every day was it was for me because I was seeing it, the frauds in newspaper, or was I was hearing it, but I was never able to make uh, this one. But then that exactly made my journey. Now I moved into anti-money laundering because I handle those products, uh, uh, KYC. Um, we find very complex structures, which uh, software can never find out who the beneficial owner is. So, uh, and, and um, um, what's happening is in the world of uh, crime and compliance, um, I think most of the banks are insisting, can we have a very highly, very intelligent artificial intelligence tool? Uh, it's very difficult because to hire a data scientist also is a huge investment. We are getting somebody from a scientist from NASA or someone else who can write some that type of fuzzy logic, this one. In fact, I am also scratching the surface of machine learning because it's again, it has become. So that's what I said. Uh, it's a very exciting field. Uh, the amount of crimes every day which comes in is 
I, I don't think it is it's beyond the CFA uh, manual also because new new frauds uh, do uh, exist. I would actually uh, like to hear That's from Harish and others also yeah. what their experiences so are. This kind of experience is something which many of us might have faced, uh, no matter where we stay. I mean, whether it could be in India, it could be outside India, but that's something very real life example. And thanks for sharing it, Mr. Prem. Now, I would like to hear from Somit and Harish. Uh, you have a very rich uh, banking and uh, financial institution experience. So, uh, the similar incident, if happened to anyone, what has happened to Mr. Prem? What would be the few things or suggestions you would have for people? Or a layman like like me, or like anyone who would suffer these kind of problems. Yeah, so I'll start, you know, from my perspective. In fact, you know, uh, rightly timed this question to me because, you know, in fact, just yesterday, you know, I was working on a presentation for our clients on identity takeover. So, what happened with Mr. Prem is 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 known as identity takeover in financial services parlance. And when I say what I mean by identity takeover is that somebody is logging into your credentials by taking over your identity. So using your ID password, uh, one is you know taking over your account, and second is maybe you know uh, obtaining a loan using your false credentials. So let's say so much somebody takes my identity, goes into a bank, uses my Aadhaar, and starts you know availing loans on my behalf. So uh, the suggestions you know to the end user or to the end customer from my side would be that you know. Uh, keep track of your financials. When I say keep track of your financials, uh, don't ignore your credit card statements. Don't ignore your you know saving account statements. Don't ignore your account statements. So uh, please create a log of those statements and keep on monitoring those statements. So what usually happen in these kind of frauds is either it's a velocity kind of a fraud wherein everything will disappear from your account in a day or so. Or it'll take a gradual period, you know. So the the user or the fraudster will try, try and siphon off, let's say, thousand dollar in one month, and another thousand in second month, and then the third thousand in fourth month, and then by end of the year you will see, you know, lot lot many accounts, you know, or the amounts going uh, out of your uh, credit card or let's say loan account. So hence it's very important one to. Uh, Keep track of your uh, statements, account statement, both liability and asset side. Second, it's very important, you know, whenever you're logging into your uh, system or, or let's say logging into your online account, do it for us through a secured VPN. It's important that you don't, you know, use the open wide uh, VPNs which are available at the airport, at the restaurant, or at the mall. You know, you can, you know, do your usual transactions, but uh, your financial transaction just ensure that you are within the secure domain. So that's second. Third, of course, you know your important credentials, which are your, let's say, ID and you know passwords and Aadhaar uh, from Indian parlance and from global parlance, other, you know, let's say, individual identity proof. Keep them very secure. Keep them very safe. Uh, the original copy, the photo photocopy, or the Xerox copy of these documents. Fourth, I would say your passwords should not be very simple. Uh, they, those those have to be a little critical passwords. Don't don't name your passwords or let's say freeze your passwords as your dog's name, your date of birth, your car or your house number or your wife's name. So these are very simple to crack. Uh, choose a little difficult password and a combination of numeric, alphanumeric, caps, non-caps, special words, and keep them as difficult as you can. Uh, five things is that, you know, try and not store your password, you know, on your digital device. Uh, if you want to store your passwords, uh, just write them down in a diary, in a physical diary and complicate them a little, uh, mask the fields, even when you are writing it on a physical paper. So these would be the broad, simple things, you know, if, if one does, uh, and the most important out of all these things is that keep track of your statements and financial records uh, in, in the area or the world we are living in. Every one of us have, you know, almost three to four credit cards, one or two loans going in our names and at least four to five accounts, saving accounts. Add that, you know, to our uh, digital devices, which is let's say an iPad or an iMac and mobile phone. So we have three or four digital devices, four or five uh, saving accounts and another, you know, three, four credit card to take care of. So these are too many devices in too many areas where you know we are vulnerable so just keep track of these devices i think then we'll be safe uh, try and keep things simple for yourself this this is the advice you know we keep on giving our customers every now and then but identity takeover has increased almost 70% in the last 3 years so that's the figure which i was contemplating yesterday uh, i don't recall the source but i this is something which i've documented and this is one of the vulnerable areas for end user or end clients or end customers Thank you so much, Somit. These uh, suggestions would be really, really helpful to all of us because these kind of identity theft frauds have been really, really going up in almost all the countries now. 
now my uh, quick question to uh, you mr harish kumar so uh, with your rich experience in the card domain that's another area where a lot of people suffer a lot yeah. so let's say uh, what card uh, has been uh, stolen or it has been misused on any of the sites and, and many time people suffer a lot so what would be your suggestion and experience here if you can just throw some light on that see on a recent era in the recent era we have seen that credit cards misuse have been transferred from lost stolen to the skimming predominantly because skimming is uh, that activity where fraudsters uh, clone your credit card and develop a copy of the same credit card but we can prevent uh, the misuse of our credentials if we if we be a little bit cautious while using our cards because all the credit cards now are day, nowadays are pin enabled credit cards so when you do a transaction you need to enter your pin so all the users who use of credit cards need to make sure while entering the pin on a any of the terminal they need to try to make it as conceal as possible because generally what we have observed uh, while investigating uh, the complaints about the lost amount of through credit cards that they have been to some kind of a restaurant or a film station and they just give a credit card to the uh, to the attender over there and tell in the pin just type in the pin and do it because either they want to don't want to get out of the car or probably in the current era of the uh, because of covid 19 they don't want to touch the key pan key panel of the terminal all those kind of a things so safeguarding your own interest is in the hand of a card holder itself uh, where they can be a little cautious while using a credit card and try to conceal their pin as much as possible and one more thing is that ki they should ensure that ki that card is foiled in their in their presence only there should not be a scenario where card is given to somebody and he has, he has took the card to some other place and coming back to you and asking for a pin and asking you to dial in a pin so there is a possibility that he might have done some kind of a trick over there when you have given him a card he went to collect the terminal over there and and with regards to the current fraud trends which are prevailing in indian domain is is one of the things which i have seen in recent time that most of us are getting the uh, whatsapp link for a rewards either it from a amazon or from any of these sport sites or adidas and all those things whereas it, these are not the reward points actually given by the brand these are the tricks used by a fraudster to get hold of your credit card and other sensitive information and many of our many of our citizens have fall prey into this tricks and they just for the reward of 200 rupees or 100 bucks they just punch in the details and as soon as they punch in the details they do, they do they get nothing now the thing which has happened is they have compromised their details to get a reward but they have not received any kind of a reward and after certain point of time their details are getting misused to do some other kind of a transactions so that is one other thing that ki nothing comes for a free if you if you if you are being rewarded by any of the brand you must have done some kind of a purchases with that brand and you, on the basis of that the brand is rewarding otherwise brand not going to reward for anything for a free on a whatsapp to each and every citizen of the india so if i'll say that ki more than 10 10 crores of the population is using the whatsapp Do you, do we believe that the brand is gonna brand gonna reward 10 crores people of India for 200 bucks? I don't think so. And the third, uh, the most recent fraud trend which I have observed in recent times is the Ponzi schemes. So all of you must have heard about the Ponzi schemes uh, in Delhi. If I talk about it, was a social trade in Noida, which has happened where 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 the uh, the 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 trickster gave, was giving 5 rupees for a click on to the portals and but before getting into that business opportunity you need to have a membership and you need to add the membership so basically he was minting money by adding up the membership instead of any kind of a click service because he was not associated with any of the brand or the organizations to do the uh, that uplinking of the network that the ponzi scheme is something which every person needs to see upon whether how the how the how the uh, the presenter is actually minting money is he minting money by the by adding up the people or some other kind of a services are also there basis which they are earning money and giving us a 
opportunity to work from home because in covid time we have seen a lot of ponzi schemes are there which are saying that ki earn money working from home but before earning money working from home you need to be a member and you need to add members so that is the sure. third point in a covid era and we all need to be very careful before doing any kind of a compromise or having any kind of opportunity that are in that's that's really really uh, helpful input harish because many of us are facing credit card and card related issues and as as rightly mentioned it could be as simple as not getting out of the car and giving the card as well as the pin number to someone and of course getting prey to all these frauds so yes we understand that the frauds are on peak and and looking at the trend i don't see the trend going down anywhere in near future now since the frauds are on peak so is the demand for fraud professionals people who can protect the community people who can protect the companies with these kind of frauds and that's where the demand for forensic professionals or fraud professionals are on peak and that's something which we foresee in the future as well and not only in a particular jurisdiction but across the globe and that is where we would like to hear again from our industry experts that if any young professional would like to get into this profession or anybody who wants to have a career switch and wants to move into risk and investigation do you think the career path is good do you think uh, the person can make a better career and a longer career here and also any any piece of advice from your end as to how we can have a successful career in this field so that is something which is my question to all the panelists yeah hi uh, so i'll start by taking the uh, stab at it uh, so uh, fraud as a fraud professional from career perspective i think uh, the area is uh, not just is but area was as exciting you know few years back and it's getting more and more exciting uh, right now for all of us uh, more so because you know uh, the transactions uh, from paper based uh, mode are now moving to digital uh, side of things or let's say side of execution now as as the transactions you know kind of execution and i'm speaking morely from financial services and banking perspective as we move towards let's say financial side of uh, banking and executing a transactions the uh, forensic side of the let's say control risk threat assessment is also going exciting as an investigator what i feel is that you know uh, the the newness to the world is ever increasing that's one the novelty uh, let's say in terms of fraud we are witnessing in in both let's say india and abroad is is also changing very dynamically the people who are perpetrating you know these uh, events you know into our lives are also getting uh, very savvy in terms of the tools in terms of the execution and modus operandi so the world itself uh, and i'm speaking you know from personal excitement perspective it's very exciting for me you know to be in this domain this is this is the right time uh, and I, I, if i may say so never has been you know this is the right time to be in the field and you know uh, and next two years and three years are are ever exciting because of the cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain you know terminals uh, coming into foray so that 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 itself you know shows me something you know when uh, which will keep me engaged in next 3 4 years and that's my personal perspective towards the uh, you know let's say fraud uh, as an area and fraud in forensic as an area from professional community perspective you know uh, is it is it fruitful for somebody as a young professional to be getting into i think the answer is uh, yes of course and uh, the one one advice i would give is that you know uh, nowadays there are too many you know people who are venturing into this field because as i said the area is too exciting so it will it will also help you know if you will equip yourself you know with with qualifications such as cfe or let's say other uh, uh, qualifications which are related to forensic and fraud education it will help you uh, not because you want to stand out from the crowd or not because you want to get a better job but also to have a structured thought you know while you are addressing these crimes so uh, and i'll give you my personal example you know uh, not in my current profile but in my earlier profile i used to perform those investigation interviews and i'm I, so till now you know i have those printouts of cfe modules kept with me you know and whenever i used to enter you know into a room uh, for those investigation interview it helps you you know to provide a structure to that you know entire conversation and it helps you know if you just turn those pages and there is a page which is still yellow marked you know for those investigation interviews i go through those pages because there is certain protocol which as an investigator you have to maintain and you 
you know cracking uh, while you are in the process of cracking your target or you know the person who has committed that fraud you kind of you know lose thought or the train of thought kind of misses out on those specific protocols that when you are taking let's say a, a confession from an individual how that confession is to be documented so tomorrow you can produce it in the court of law if required so so these are these are those minimum protocols you know which all of us have to be uh, you know uh, be adhering to uh, easier said than done but having a perspective from these qualifications let's say cfa and other you know qualifications give you a little background on how to conduct these difficult let's say engagements in the interview was just one example you know if i am you know reviewing a procurement fraud or any other fraud you know again going back to the module going back to the pages which i have read always helps so young professionals who ever would be witnessing this video i would definitely advise you to either pursue this qualification that's one and second if not if if it's too heavy for you at least start reading around the subject educating yourself around the subject is very 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 important uh, before you enter into this field and uh from from time period perspective or time frame perspective i would just like to say that you know uh, and i can speak from the banking and financial services perspective coming 5 years is the most exciting period according to me and i'm sure uh, and i'm saying 5 years because i can't see beyond 5 years but coming 5 years is very exciting uh, i think you know i have done cfe i have done cisa i have done csm i'm right now working on machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, learning python right now as we speak so uh, and and i know that you know <laughs> coming 5 years again i have to you know equip myself with few other things as well so much so that i'm also doing phd in for forensic uh, risk management yeah. so again uh, from area perspective i think uh, educating yourself is not uh, i think whichever way and whatever way we can educate ourselves would be less that's one as professional uh, you know and why i'm saying that you know young professionals should get into cfe or others you know let's say uh, educational skills which are required to conduct uh, investigations the reason behind that is that you know when i as a senior member of professional community i review at a resume or i review uh, talk to a person or or speak to an individual if the person says that you know he has been educating himself or herself in these fields or on these subjects has he a fee qualification or let's say any other certification i i i get that you know a sense that the person is serious to get into this field that that is the minimum i get when i see you know uh, these qualification and these skills certain as you may so i know that the person is a little serious to get into this field that's one and then i gauge them on the knowledge it's not only about the certification how how depth he has on the subject is also but, but that's the second thing Uh, so so of course you know uh, one is from let's say your personal understanding of the subject and second is how a professional would review you or view you or your credentials when he sees those uh, certifications on your resume absolutely right so met and and very very useful inputs for all the people who are young professional who wants to get into the profession also people who want to have a career switch uh, any input from you uh, mr prem and harish yeah so um thanks so much uh, i think you snatched most of my points uh, but uh, thanks uh, just to supplement what somit said uh, is uh, i because i started my career as an accountant uh, so uh, mostly um, a few years back when i did my uh, uh, post management accounting we used to think that either one accounting profession is actually sufficient at least in india like it's it's sufficient because it covers a very comprehensive area but today what has happened things have become very different blockchain probably may actually break the entire double entry accounting system into a triple entry accounting system probably you may not need a chartered accountant at all because everything is going to be this one you probably need a kind of a techno function or probably in fact i don't know what the what the qualification could be so today my perspective is Uh, as so much covered on the banking i'm going to cover most uh, most on the manufacturing side where a lot of inventory fraud happens and other things you have extremely good erp systems you have got lot of uh, uh, reconciliation systems and other things rp is coming in in a huge way which actually is not making an accounting professional uh, i mean to say uh, with because i know the rigor of accounting profession uh, it takes to actually to qualify but that is that is totally getting switched by machines are going to do most of the things so it's going to be like a very subjective way where an accountant is going to look and that's where the need of something like like it is like if i would say uh, i would compare the accounting qualification as a, just as the basic mbbs these are all the super specializations what you do in like an, as a doctor profession like fraud investigation and forensic is a lifelong journey 
Somit has a view of he's bullish of five years. I think as long this universe exists, fraud is going to be there because it is a balance of the good and the evil. So we will be always will be challenged. Now, if you feel for youngsters, my piece of advice is if you want very challenge, if you want super challenging work, of course, look at fraud. But the thing is that please be bad in the mind. This is not something like, okay, I finished the certification, I'm done, I, I'm this one. It is like, okay, I started the journey with Kamaljit Madam last year. Now I, I went to camps. I said, okay, I'm going to finish this one. Now I've taken OSINT. Now what is OSINT? This is open source techniques exactly when you want to do an investigation. So it, it goes on and on. It is like a layer of onion. You go over and over. So if you have that, this one, again, I don't want to, uh, guys don't get overwhelmed. Uh, this is a piece of advice for the uh, for the youngsters who want to get in this one. Take life, enjoy life, do it. And there is nothing like this one. You can do it at, at whatever age. It's all the passion and other things. Have some experience. If you are a fresh CA or a CMA or this one, have some industry experience because then you will be able to really uh, appreciate uh, the, the fraud uh, curriculum and the uh, the complexities involved into this one then you can take always a, a specialization whether you want to get into a, a particular kind of fraud or do you want to get into a specialization like anti-money laundering or crimes or something like that or do you want to get into cyber this one so it's all again branching out what you want to do so um, so <clears throat> the, the point over here is i'm looking this uh, for uh, nothing less than for next 25 30 years i think i think that's what everyone's career would be or i mean to say in case people have also worked for about 40 50 years there is no retirement and um, as you grow old you learn much you become more wise because wisdom is a co um, i think as they say that uh, experience is the comb you get it when you become bald so the point is that i think you become <laughs> so this goes on in a journey for a very very long time so there is no retirement age i mean to say i have seen especially in acfp this one uh, especially when I was doing in December, I was doing the advanced program. Um, it was fabulous because the instructor was, fra was from FBI, 35 years of experience. That's the way I learned exactly how an interview has to be taken. And I have been doing always the wrong type of interview, hiring the wrong, wrong kind of person because I never knew. I was <laughs> never taught exactly. So those are some skills which you will learn if you are a student, if you have a student mode, then please jump in your life this one, but have some experience. You will relish it much more. I think fresh from a CA and other things, I think you finished a, such a big program, wait for some time, enjoy yourself, go for your work and other things, and then slowly see what exactly interests you. It's totally on your interest and other things. Those are my two cents. Very, very realistic, uh, you know. <clears throat> Uh, situation and of course a very very good piece of advice uh, frame because I also uh, keep telling all my uh, students and audience that uh, while getting experience while enjoying your profession don't forget to enjoy your life as well right so work and and life try to have a good balance and of course I would go with this frame's advice a few last uh, piece of advices from your end Harish before we uh, log out uh, so ma'am I have started my career with the collections uh, role. So during the course of uh, my initial phase of my career, so I have seen across a high, very uh, high profile kind of a fraud event happening in the in the Delhi market specifically, if we talk about. So that incident actually enticed me to learn ki what kind of a methodology this guy has actually adopted to dupe complete banking system because that, that event has actually impacted all the institutions. And there was very high exposure at that point of time. I'm talking about 2005-2006. So that enticement actually took me to the uh, fraud investigation role and fraud investigator risk management and everything. So for the, from the last 14 odd years, I have been to the fraud investigation and uh, role, uh, risk management role. But when we go through the uh, CFP module, what was actually learned that whatever we have gained through our experience while handling day-to-day -day routine cases, investigations, whether all kind of a legal implication challenges, that every aspect is 
absolutely covered in in a detailed manner in the manual which actually enriches uh, your capability to perform your assignments in a efficient and effective manners so the kind of uh, i have gained the knowledge over experience of 13 14 odd years and when i got, when i went through the cfe module what i have learned that ki there are still so many things which i need to learn at uh, to be at the next level along with the my along with the all kind of experience which i have gained basis my uh, work so that is the power of cfe module which is there it enables us to perform our work our role and the understanding of what is happening in front of us across in our, in our day to day routine lives cfp has all those powers and along with this as swamit and prem uh, sir rightly said the uh, the future is coming around with the uh, automation where every industry is looking towards the automation whether it it, it is uh, from a business perspective it is from a control perspective monitoring perspective or a risk management perspective so you will understand the automation machine learning ai only when you have the understanding of the basic concepts so cfp gives the understanding about the basic concepts of the frauds uh, which is prevailing in the in the worldwide domain so all those uh, fresh blood new joinees want to have a profession of a fraud investigation cfp is is the basic for the learning uh, the, the kind of uh, which they will learn in very short span of time which otherwise we have learned over a period of last 15 14 odd years so that is the power of cfp very clearly so so guys if you see the trend of all these three industry leader they started from the very basic level but then they have reached to this level and they are still growing and i'm sure uh, with god's grace they'll be going much beyond that the two things which i've noticed is one that they have not stopped learning at any stage of their life they've been still upgrading their skill set just because they have reached here it doesn't mean that they have stopped growing they have stopped learning so one that learning is a continuous thing which is common among all three leaders and secondly they are not they have not stopped getting more exposure and experience in various fields right so experience and the 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 knowledge they have got through certifications or the degrees or the continuous updation of knowledge that's the two things which are very very common among these leaders and that's exactly what is actually required for all of us right so no matter at what stage of career you are at whether you are at initial level mediocre level or at top management don't stop learning right and don't stop getting exposure and experiences because these two will be really really helpful in making your career with this i would like to end up the session here with a very very big thanks to all the prestigious leaders mr prem kumar Somit and Harish, thank you so much for taking time out for us, and I'm sure this session will be really, really helpful to all the people out there. Thank you so much from bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you all.